Now this is the new DOE satellite. It only measures 20 centimeters tall, but it is a massive achievement for the students at McMaster University. This is the university's first space-bound satellite, launching tonight on the SpaceX shuttle launch. The new DOE project was developed over a span of eight years through the efforts of more than 150 students, staff, and alumni. The goal is to gather information on space radiation and help scientists better understand the risks astronauts face on prolonged missions in space. Well, for more on this, we're joined by Jonathan Denzel. He is the thermal team lead for McMaster's first new dose satellite team. He's also an engineering student at McMaster University, and he joins us on what is a very big day for him. He's in Orlando, Florida this morning before he makes his way to the Kennedy Space Center. Jonathan, good morning. Hi, Mr. John. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. You can just call me John. Listen, you've been working at McMaster for years on this satellite. Now you're in Florida, about to watch it launch. How's it feel? Oh, it's, uh, it feels surreal. Um, the team's been working super hard on it. They started in 2015. I joined in 2018, um, so it's been a long time for me as well. Um, we're going down to the Kennedy Space Center uh, in about an hour, and to see it, you know, to see the rocket and know that our satellite is on top of that, it's, it's almost overwhelming. Let's talk about some uh, logistics here. Uh, how has the satellite gotten to the International Space Station? Do you put it in your carry-on? How do you get it there? Well, it, it starts off with um, an integration, a long process of uh, integration testing um, with the Canadian Space Agency. And then um, they take the satellite and um, they hand it over to NASA and they integrate it with the SpaceX rocket. Uh, and so that's how it's sitting on top of the rocket right now. And then the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket will launch uh, to the International Space Station at 8.30 p.m. today, uh, where it'll sit for about three to four months, uh, waiting for an astronaut to deploy it into uh, low Earth orbit. So then an astronaut effectively, what, uh, launches it from the space station? Is that, uh, is it, do you put it gently out into space or do you fire it out? How do you get it out in, into orbit? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's launched by something called a NanoRacks deployer. Um, and it's basically a spring-loaded mechanism to eject the satellite out of the side of the International Space Station um, at an angle so that, you know, on its return orbit, it doesn't collide with the space station. Yeah, absolutely. Those angles uh, are very important in space. Let's talk about this then. So what exactly is the satellite going to do out there as it orbits the, the Earth? And, and, and how does that information uh, get back and what do you do with it? So the main purpose of the satellite is basically a radiation detector. Um, so we call that our payload. And then the rest of the team builds, uh, you know, all the electronics and structure around the payload. So the payload is a radiation detector and it can just distinguish between charged and neutral particle radiation. Um, and it has a tissue equivalent proportional counter, uh, which emulates a human fat cell. So we're studying the effects of um, charged and neutral particle radiation on humans in long-term missions. Wow, a, 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 so it's effectively your, your, the, your device is mimicking uh, the, the, the human body and, and, and what it would encounter out in space. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In terms of how, um, you know, the, the tissue reacts to radiation and, and the kind of doses that we can see accumulate. Um, so that's what we're trying to measure. You say that it's being launched at the right angle so it doesn't uh, collide with the space station. You get it out far enough and fast enough, I guess. But then uh, there's a lot of other stuff out there in space. Uh, this is a, a small object, as we know. But, but how robust is it, or how do you uh, uh, assure that it doesn't uh, collide with anything else out there? Um, we have no active attitude control or way of maneuvering the satellite. Uh, we do have passive control uh, using magnets and hysteresis rods, which basically align with um, the Earth's magnetic field to you know, limit rotation and, and ensure that we can point the satellite towards the Earth so we can communicate with it. But we have no way of avoiding other objects, but we're small enough that it, you know, space is huge. It's really low likelihood that um, we'll actually crash into another object. Okay, but there is a, a degree of finger crossing going on in there, if I'm hearing what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, we, we've, we've run simulations to see, you know, what the probability is, but the probability is, like, really small. 
I asked you right off the top, how does it feel to be a part of this project? Uh, what does it mean for you as an engineering student uh, from a Canadian university playing on, this is what, the Super Bowl for scientists, isn't it? I mean, how, what does it mean for you career-wise? Have you gotten feedback from NASA? Tell me about that, uh, that end of the equation. Yeah, this is, uh, it, it's such a unique opportunity, I think, for, for Canadian students and to be part of the Canadian Space Agency's Canadian CubeSat project, which is their initiative to try and, you know, bolster the, the space industry within Canada. And that starts with the universities. So we have, uh, you know, a range of universities across Canada who are involved in this project, um, each with their own missions. And, and for us specifically at Nudos, it's, it's special because we get to experience the space industry without even graduating yet, you know? So, you know, being able to contribute to a real space mission and, and you know, experience what it's like, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a unique opportunity. Um, it's helped me specifically get internships and, and my, you know, current job placement. So um, it's something that'll set you know, I'll put you apart from other students, which is really useful. Yeah, I could just picture the uh, internship uh, interview. What have you done? Well, I put a satellite on the space station. You know, it's uh, uh, one final question before I let you go. Uh, this is a pretty good uh, first time out, if you will, uh, career-wise as a scientist. Where, where do you want to head, Jonathan? I, I'm personally, uh, I have a job lined up in, in Minneapolis. I'm going to Honeywell Aerospace and I get to work on atomic clocks and um, developing guidance and navigation systems. So this is a good, you know, segue uh, from, you know, satellites to, to other satellite systems and um, all within aerospace. So this is this helped me get my foot in the door and um, it's, it's helped a lot of people on the team as well, I know. Uh, so I'm really thankful for this opportunity and I'm really honored to be part of the team and we have such a great team as well such brilliant minds um, that we just you know learn from each other and and push each other to to the absolute limits well they're lucky to have you uh we're lucky to have you and and your colleagues uh in this country doing what you have been doing uh good luck to you with this launch and good luck to you as you launch your career going forwards jonathan thank you so much thank you so much nudo satellite thermal team lead and mcmaster student jonathan Denzel.